Hello, my name is Pete Malloy, and I am the priest here at St. Margaret the Queen Buxted in uh, Buxted Park, which is a lovely church, which is where we're sitting now. And I look forward to the day when uh, this dreaded pandemic is over and I get to visit with you uh, lovely children in your classes and to meet your teachers and, and to spend time and have a role in your school. But unfortunately at this point, we're kind of limited as I suspect you know. I do know one of the students in your school. His name is? Simeon. Simeon, and he is in year four. And Simeon is my son. And so some of you have seen me at the school, uh, usually with a dog named Molly. And uh, when I go to pick up Simeon after school or drop him off in the morning. And Simeon is very pleased to be at uh, Buxted Primary. He says he's made lots of nice friends. Is that true? Yeah. And he has a nice teacher. Yeah. Is that true? Okay, good. And you said the girls don't boss you around enough. Is that true? Please stop saying that. Do not. All right. In the interest of, of, of honesty, Simeon did not ask me to say that the girls don't boss him around enough. So no bossing around girls or boys or anything, right? Mm. All right, good. Now, I have been talking to your uh, head, uh, and she asked me if I would make some videos to uh, help with your assemblies, because normally I would come to your school and, and lead some assemblies, and we could uh, chat that way. Now, normally, it's a much easier thing because um, you get to talk to kids and you get to figure out what they're doing and, and help kind of work out if, if the things we're saying make sense to them by how they look and if they look kind of glazed over or bored, then you think, okay, I need you to take a different tack. Uh, but now I'm doing it by video and that's why I asked my son Simeon to come and he is representing all of you students and Simeon says that everything I say is funny and smart. Never and said that once in my life. Never, never, ever once. All right. Never happened. And so I'm going to teach Simeon about justice, and I'm going to trust that you are able to figure out some things about justice uh, as we go through. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is justice, Simeon? Um. Uh, when someone does something wrong, that they pay for it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. When, when someone does something wrong, that they pay for it. And if they didn't pay for doing something wrong, would that be justice? No. No, that wouldn't be. We call that unjust, unjust. Teachers, you can pause here and tell your students if it's unjust or unjust. All right. One way of, and, and justice isn't just about um, punishing people for doing something wrong, but one way of saying it is it's the upholding of what is fair and just and right. So it's not just about punishing people, but it's also doing the right thing uh, at different times. And so we're going to talk about justice. And the Bible has a verse about justice. I'm going to ask Simeon to read. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But just to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Very good. So one thing we learn from the Bible is that justice is something that is required of us. That we are required to be people who uphold what is right and what is fair and what is just. And so in that way, we are to be like God because God is just and God is a God of justice. Another way of saying it is God is a fair God and God needs to be a fair God. I don't know if, you've, if you have ever had the experience of your parents acting in an unfair fashion. Very, 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 100%, 1 million percent true true with him. I don't know what happens in your home, but I will tell you that I was the youngest of five children and my parents always favored my older sisters to me and that was unfair. And so we, we know instinctively 
when we're being treated fairly and when we're not being treated fairly. We know when, when if, if one of our siblings is, is uh, given something and we're not, if, if one of our siblings does something and they're not punished for it, we demand justice. How come you're not doing that? That sort of thing. And so we also recognize that God must be a fair God or God must be a God of justice. Think about it this way. Imagine a police officer and the police officer was a nice police officer. He was very kind to every person he met. He was very uh, friendly when people would go by. He would even open doors for people on the street and those sorts of things. And just a very lovely man or woman. And, but imagine if that police officer was also very kind to robbers and he didn't arrest them or if he was very kind to people who were driving dangerously and he just let them go. Would that be a good police officer? Mm. Now, why would he, not be, he or she not be a good police officer? Because he wasn't doing justice. That's right, he was not upholding what was fair and just and right. And so God also has to be a God of justice. God also has to uphold what is good and fair and right. And so we too are called to be people of justice. That's right. And so we need to be people who uphold what is good and fair and right. But here's the other part of it. God is also a God of love. And so justice is not the whole story. So God must be a God who, is, is, who upholds what is right, but he is also a God who loves us and is able to forgive us. Now, one of the biggest problems that we have in terms of, of relationship to God and justice is that we are people who sometimes sin. And Simeon, do you remember a definition of sin I taught you a number of years ago? Sin is everything that we... Think badly, say badly, or do. do badly. Yeah, anything that we think, say, or do that, that displeases God. And so God is a God of justice, and, and the God of justice demands that we, mean, we, like our older siblings, must be punished for sin. But God is also a God of love. And so his solution to this, I think, is the best example possible of justice and love mixed together. And that is his son, Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ came into the world so that he could take the punishment for our sins. Our sins still needed to be punished, but Jesus said, I will take the punishment for our sins. So God's, God's justice is upheld in his son, Jesus Christ, and God's love is upheld in his son, Jesus Christ. There's another example we see of this with uh, God's servant, Abraham. God uh, uh, told Abraham that he would be the father of nations, and he set aside a great land for Abraham. And Abraham knew that this land was his, and he went with his nephew, Lot, and as they reached the promised land, Abraham saw uh, what rich lands there were, and he was there with his, his uh, nephew, Lot. And who, did, who got the first pick of the lands? Do you remember, Simeon? Lot. That's right. Also, the reason I know is because af after you put me to bed, sometimes I, I go out into your room and read. I think we have another justice <laughs> issue to discuss later on. All right. So Abraham knew that the lands belonged to him, but he was a loving person as well to his nephew Lot. And so he gave him the first choice. And so that's a way in which we can be people who are just but also generous we can treat people generously. So think of it this way. God demands justice. God is a God of justice. Sit still, buddy. But he's also a God of love. And we too should be loving people and generous towards other, even when we think they are being unjust or unjust towards us. Simeon, will you read that verse again? Let's remember this verse and see what it tells us. Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good, 
And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. And so we see three things there. One, that we are to be people of justice, but we are also to be people who are kind. And finally, we're told to walk humbly with God. And sometimes that means letting God be God and not us, and trusting that he will be just. And that even means, sit still, and that even means letting your teachers be teachers, and letting them decide what's just, and letting your parents be parents, and letting them decide what is just. So, justice. God is a God of justice. He upholds what's fair and just and right, and he is loving and generous, and we can trust him. So we're going to finish our time by saying some prayers. And uh, Simeon, will you pass me the Bible again? And we're going to pray specifically for the coronavirus and the pandemic situation. And there's some prayers that you might be able to find uh, with your families. It's called Praying for the Nation. And we will do two prayers from this, and then we'll close by saying the Lord's Prayer. And at the uh, Lord's Prayer, if you know it, I'd invite you to say it with me. Why don't you do this first prayer, Simeon? Loving God, at this time of crisis when so many are suffering, we pray for our nation and our world. Give our leaders wisdom and our health service strength and our people hope. Lead us through these parched and difficult days to the fresh springs of joy and comfort that we find in, the, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we're also going to pray, and because I think this is going to be shown to you on Thursday, we'll pray the prayer for Thursday. Our God is the great healer, and the agent used more than, than any other is the NHS. Today we voice our gratitude for those who serve in this country, in the National Health Service, and pray for that God would prosper the work of their hands, that they would all be encouraged in their continued work and sacrifice and care amongst us. And let's also pray the prayer especially for schools. Do you want to pray that one, Simeon? In, we pray for all those involved in the shaping of young lives, we give God thanks for the sacrifice and commitment of the teachers and all those involved in serving children and young people in education. We pray that, that all might be nurtured and cared for and that every needful resource would be made available, that lives can flourish even in these difficult times that no one would be overlooked. Amen. And now I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.